welcome to today's lesson looking at gravitational field strength, which forms part of the gravitational fields topic in the AQA A level physics specification. So in today's lesson, we're going to try and calculate the gravitational field strength of a gravitational field. So we should be able to define what gravitational field strength is, calculate the gravitational field strength for all fields, and describe how the gravitational field strength varies with distance, which falls into the following part of the AQA A level physics specification 3.722 gravitational field strength which is found on paper 2 of the AQA A-level physics specification. So in previous lessons, we've considered the physics behind gravitational field patterns, and we can, we've considered the force exerted on two objects placed inside of the field, which we can calculate with Newton's law of gravitation. But this value is only dependent on the objects in the field. It's not an actual measure of the gravitational field itself. So we need to also consider the effect of the gravitational field independent of any objects Placed inside of it. And with this idea, we can look at this concept of gravitational field strength. So, gravitational field strength, or any field strength, is the force exerted on one unit per unit per, of, per one object per unit property of the field due to the object being in the field. So, for example, gravitational field strength is the force per unit mass experienced by an object inside a gravitational field. Now, gravitational field strength can be shown on gravitational field diagrams as the density of gravitational field lines. So the gravitational field strength is the force per unit mass experienced at a position in the field. Now, you'll notice that in a radial field, the gravitational field strength changes in different places. But in a uniform field, the gravitational field strength is the same everywhere in that field. Now, gravitational field strength is a vector quantity. It always points towards the center of the object producing the gravitational field. And while units of gravitational field strength are newtons per kilogram. Now, like we said before, in a uniform field, we assume the density of, field of the field lines to be constant, so we can assume the gravitational field strength to be constant. So this is what we assume at the surface of the Earth. Now, this allows us to use the standard equation to calculate gravitational field strength which is G equals F over M, where F is the gravitational force experienced by an object in the field, M is the mass of the object experiencing the gravitational force, and obviously G is our gravitational field strength. Now this is the general equation for the gravitational field strength of any field in any situation. So let's look at an example question. An 80 kilogram astronaut feels a force of 130 newtons due to the gravity on the moon. What is the value of G on the moon? Well, step one, write out your equation. G equals F over M. Step two, place the values in the equation, 130 over 80. Step three, calculate the values. You get 1.625 newtons per kilogram, but then what we do is we write it to the appropriate number of significant figures, which I would say to be three in the question, because there's three for 80.0 80 and four for 130.0. So uh, as a result, we go with the smaller value, so we go with 3, 1.63 newtons per kilogram. Now, with this equation, it okay, is very useful, but it can only calculate the, the field strength at that point in the field. As this indicates, by the way, that G is a force divided by a mass, we could also consider this value of G to be an acceleration, because we know from Newton's second law of motion, A equals F over M, and G equals F over M, so actually G could also be considered an acceleration. So another unit for gravitational field strength is meters per second squared, the unit of acceleration. Now, in a radial field, as the density of field lines decreases with distance, so it increases by a factor of 1 over r squared, or decreases by a factor of r squared, we must assume the gravitational field strength does this also. Now, you can't assume the gravitational field strength stays constant when you move along these radial fields. So when you move a great distance from or to a massive body, you can't assume G is staying constant. So if we put a satellite into the upper atmosphere of the Earth, we can't assume G is staying constant when we do this. Now this is reflected in the equation for gravitational field strength for radial fields, which is G equals big G M over R squared. Now let's look at this, and it's derived from looking at Newton's law of gravitation, because if F equals G M M over R squared, and if we know G is F over M, or we can place 
that into the equation because we can say g equals a big G M M over R squared divided by M. What we can then do is cancel the M's, the small M's through, so we get G equals big G M over R squared. So let's look at an example question regarding this. So if the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms and its radius is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters, what is the value of G at the surface of the Earth? Now note, we're only finding it in one particular place, at the surface. This isn't the G for the overall field because it's changing all of the time. So, step one, write out the equation. G equals big G M over R squared. You place your values into your equation with obviously big G being the um, gravitational constant and big M being the mass of the Earth in this situation because that's the thing that's producing the gravitational field and divide it by um, R squared which is the separation and we're looking at that to be from the core of the Earth because that's where the field is produced to the surface which is what we're trying to find. Now, we then work out our value, and we're going to place the correct number of significant figures and with the correct units. So we get 9.83 newtons per kilogram. Now, like we said before, big G is the universal gravitational constant, big M is the mass of the object creating the gravitational field, and R is the separation between the object in the field and the object making the field. So the value of G at the surface of the Earth is approximately 9.81 newtons per kilogram. But this will decrease as you move off the surface of the Earth as R is going to get bigger. Okay, so it, it, it decreases by a factor of, of R squared. It's increasing by a factor of 1 over R squared. It's an example of the inverse square law. Now, we can actually show this particular pattern by looking at the following graph. This graph plots G on the y-axis and R separation on the x-axis. Now, you'll notice that actually... Okay, if you were to tunnel through the, towards the Earth's core, the gravitational field strength actually decreases linearly until it reaches zero when you're at the center. So actually what we can notice is that it follows this inverse square law at a maximum value at the surface of an object as it tends away from it. But as you go under the surface of a planet producing a gravitational field such as the Earth, the actual gravitational field strength decreases. Now, essentially what this means is that you would actually hover in the center of the Earth if you reached it and it was hollow. The reason because this happens is because all the mass will be pulling you equally in every direction. So the resultant force will be zero, meaning that you wouldn't accelerate in any direction. Once you go under the surface, the mass above you, above you in the surface is trying to pull you upwards, whilst the mass below you is trying to pull you downwards. So there's there's not the same accumulative effect as if you're on the surface where it's all pulling you downwards which is why the value is going down when you go under the surface of your planet such as the earth okay and working out the gravitational field strength but you can also show it mathematically because we know the volume of a sphere which is like a planet is equal to v equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed we also know the density of the sphere is rho equals big M over V. So we can substitute the equations into each other and make M the subject. We can then use the equation for G and this equation for mass to get the following equation. And as such, it simplifies to this. So what this shows you is that within the Earth's surface, when big R is smaller than and, and small, and small R, the gravitational field strength G is directly proportional to the distance from the centre of the planet. So the closer you get to the centre of the planet, the lower the gravitational field strength until you hit the centre of the planet, and in theory, the gravitational field strength will be zero. Now, gravitational field strength is a vector quantity. This means you can add them up to find the combined effect of more than one object. But remember, you've got to carefully consider the direction of the field. So you could be asked to find the resultant gravitational field strength at point P in this particular example. So let's have a look at one of these types of questions. So what is the gravitational field strength at point P when it is a distance x from mass m and a distance 2x from mass 4m in the other direction? Well, step one, take one direction as a positive. So let's take the right-hand side of P as a positive. So the object with a mass of 4m will deduce as positive, and because mass of m is in the other direction, it's on the left-hand side, we'll say that's a negative. 
So what you then do is sum the effect of each sphere, and we know that g equals g m over r squared. So let's put our values in. So on the on the positive side, the right hand side, it's g 4 m because the mass is 4 m divided by 2 x squared because the distance r is 2 x. And then we do it for the other side, but now it's a negative, so it's minus g m over x squared. What you then do is you work through the values as such. Now we'll notice that it goes to g 4 m over 4 x minus g m over x squared. So the two fours, the two fours will cancel through. So it goes g m x squared over g m x squared. So the two values cancel out. So it's zero newtons per kilogram. At that particular point, the two objects' gravitational field strengths cancel each other out. So overall, there's no gravitational field strength at that point. And always remember to give your answers to the appropriate and significant figures with the correct units. So what have we learned in today's lesson? That we can represent gravitational fields with gravitational field lines. G is a force per unit mass defined by the equation G equals F over M. And the magnitude of G in a radial field is given by G equals big G, big M over R squared. So if you've been successful and you've learned in today's lesson, you can define what gravitational field strength is. You can calculate the gravitational field strength for all values. And you can describe how the gravitational field strength varies with distance. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on gravitational field strength. And have a lovely day.